Coming up on tonight's show, Alan tells Gary to shut up. Gary doesn't, and I probably offend another religion. Welcome to Game All Night. So tonight I'm joined by Alan Gerding of Tuesday Night Games. On a side note, Alan and I had never met in person. Unlike every other guest I've had on the show so far, I at least knew them from different places and different things, but he proved to be a great and wonderful guest, even having me on his podcast. So be sure to check that out. So tonight I'm coming at you from in front of the shelfie of Spam Sicola. So this is a pretty cool game room, I would have to say. I think I could enjoy a game or two down here. Love the crokinole table and all the other asides he's got laying around. He really knows how to game. So I want to see yours up here. Do just like he did. Use the hashtag GAN Shelfie and send yours in. You can also check out our BGG group and you can also do it on Facebook. Well, enough of me blathering on. Let's start the show. Now, my next guest you may know from Two Rooms and a Boom. We have Alan Gerding of Tuesday Night Games. Alan, where are you? Hey! hey. I'm so excited to be <laughs> nice. here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I should have oh, done dude. maybe a stair move. Maybe this one would have been better if I did the... Oh, but, no, but now you just ruined the exit. That was perfect. Oh, I've got more. <laughs> I've got way more, so... You got a couple work more. On them. Yeah, I just got like hey, man, the, the couch you know. gag always works. Always works. Awesome. Well, thanks for coming on, man. Hey, thanks for having me. I'm excited. This is a sweet setup. Like, I'm loving your buildings. The couch is amazing. And you look very good, sir. I, I feel underdressed. So well, my apologies. Well, thank you. You know. You know, this is how it, we do it in Cleveland. Nighttime, you gotta dress up. Yeah. Well, you know, each to their own. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but awesome but well, you have the rock and roll hall of fame so you're you're pretty good on the the cool front you can totally rock it that's right that's all we need we're like man cleveland what are we gonna do rock and roll hall of fame done and that's it <laughs> awesome so i i re appreciate you coming on the show i know that um you and i haven't actually met until today um earlier uh i was on alan's podcast the tuesday night games and it was uh it was pretty cool we had a little chat so be sure to check that out he'll probably release that before i release this i have a feeling but uh that was uh it was a fun chat we, we talked a lot about the origin of the show and everything like that so thanks for having me on i appreciate that that was really cool Hey, I don't want to blow too much smoke up your ass, but you were a great guest because this is quite a story that you've just emerged with this amazing setup and you are working with one of our knights, Sir Gary Pope. So thanks for sending in your audio, Gary. No longer yeah. a knave, now a knight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks. Whoa, you got upgraded. Nice. Yes. So, yes. yeah, and it's, um, you know, it was a... Uh, a labor of love and it came out of uh gary and i meeting at gen con last year is kind of where this this whole mess kind of started so it's you know how things are kind of organic in this business right yeah and gen con's crazy you cannot not bump into a whole bunch of people the next thing you know you're just pressed up against eric lang or some publisher you don't even know and then you look like oh my goodness yeah. you you're bruno Fud bruno fuditi you totally made uh, Ink and Gold, my favorite game. It's just amazing how many people you meet by going in the convention circuit. It's incredible. Yeah, it was. Uh, it's definitely you know one of the more interesting things is that's where I just meet a lot of people, and I don't have, I don't know why, but I have like no issue. I feel like I should lay on the couch because I feel like you could like psychoanalyze me a little bit here because I have no issue. Like just walking up to people and saying, "Hey, thanks for putting out what you put out. It's pretty awesome. You know, I appreciate it." And like it. I don't know. It just doesn't feel weird to me. Is that normal? Or do you think people get all like, uh, 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 and then run away from these guys? I, I think it depends. 
it is a unique thing to have that perspective where you automatically know that they're human beings because for the average person, when you meet a celebrity for lack of better terms, just someone whose work you really appreciate, there's that initial sympathetic nervous system response. Your heart's pumping, your palms are sweaty, your mouth is dry, your pupils are dilated. And you're just asking yourself, please, can you be cool, be cool? And then it totally <laughs> fails because it shows so you're like the Iceman then, because normally after you get to know that they're regular people, then you're relaxed. And then it usually goes full cycle where they you get annoyed by those people. Because when I have fans of our podcast or our game come up, I'm usually a bigger fan than they are. And so they get over that initial excitement really quick. And pretty soon they're just trying to get away because I'm like, <laughs> hey, let's keep talking. I want friends. Let's hang out. So yeah, you're the ice man. You just skip right to, Hey, let's just be jovial. We're human beings. You know, and that, that's just it. It's like, it, it, it's just natural to, you know, we hear about everybody who does these shows and these podcasts, especially, I think there's something special about podcast people. You, you think, you know, them intimately because they're sharing all this stuff and they're sharing it with a microphone and friends and you're listening and I know all this stuff about you and I just walk up to you and be like, Hey, I'm here. I know all this about you. You know, nothing about me. I have all the power and it's, but it's just weird. It's such a weird relationship yeah. that we have with these, you know, all the media creators, I think. Yeah. But, I think another thing worth talking about, or at least mentioning is the way that reviewers are held in the regard of gamers in the gaming industry versus all of the other entertainment industries because okay. movie reviewers are typically viled and music reviewers people are like man i hate your reviews but people still listen to them if they're popular or whatnot but in our industry people seem to love the reviewers hey hey thanks for reviewing those games even if i disagree with your opinion so it seems like such a nice friendly environment overall Thoughts? No, it, it absolutely, it, it makes a lot of sense. And it's, what's really curious too, is that there's, you know, every now and then you have that descending voice that goes, oh, you guys aren't critical enough. And we talked earlier where, you yes. know, these reviewers, I don't want to play a crud game, crap game, like for five plays, like screw that. My, I don't want to waste 10 hours of my life on a garbage game. You know, but they want <laughs> reviewers to be critical and stuff. I'm like, no, it's like it's it just doesn't make sense. It's why you always see the critical reviews are always about like the short games. Like, oh, this little yeah. card game was crap and they throw it away, right? So I Yeah, it's I guess a brilliant they're point. All, they're all, yeah, they're all they're all like, you know, fart and sunshine and it's just like, <laughs> wow, they love everything. It it's it's the same thing, right? If I like the rock chances are I'm going to like all the movies the rocks in. So you can kind of pick and choose your movie taste based. And by the way, Dwayne Johnson's awesome, but you yeah, know, agreed. It's, I mean, it's just, yeah. So, I mean, you, I have a man crush there. There it is. Right. But the, um, the idea is, is that you can kind of pick and choose your movies. It's the same thing with games. We can kind of say, Hey, you know, Bruno Fiduti does stuff. I like he, he makes my brain work a certain way. So I'm going to like all his stuff. Right. I mean, usually yeah. it works. Yeah. No, I'm a huge Bruno fan. No joke. That was probably the biggest celebrity moment I had in the industry because no exaggeration, Bruno came up to our booth when we were selling two rooms in a boom and I recognized him and he was also wearing his badge that said Bruno. <laughs> and I was like, ah, uh, ah. Uh, uh, oh my goodness. And so of course I got all the pictures or whatever. And then it was this weird transition where he actually wanted to show us some of his games if we were interested in publishing. And he said in his heavy accent, uh, I think there's some specific games that are for your company. And he showed us the game Kama Sutra, which we took <laughs> and we played. Oh have you guys heard God. of Kama Sutra? I have that upstairs. Yeah. Like right now. <laughs> and I still need to play it. That's my problem. <laughs> I mean, there's, it's, it's almost it's weird the... saying I have it upstairs right now. Uh, but <laughs> well, yeah, it absolutely. It's having it out the like back. The <laughs> <laughs> it's, here's the thing. I got an amazing compliment from Bruno via social media 
and he didn't name names, but we ended up rejecting the game. And this is why I have a bad back. The, my teeth are fake and my back's all messed up because of a diving accident. And that's another story for another day. But I'm playing this with my business partner, Sean McCoy, and you inflate the balloons, you draw a card, and it shows you a sex position. And then it, another team's doing the same position. Whoever pops the balloon first wins. And so Sean McCoy is just going to town on me, trying to pop the balloon. And it ended up hurting my disc. I was like, stop, stop, Sean. And so I wrote this letter like, hey, I'm such a huge fan. And I'm so glad you thought of us. And I'd really love to publish this. However, I'm a little bit concerned that I myself can't play this game because of physical injury. And especially because we're in America, I'm a little lawsuit scared. But it got yeah. picked up. And I think Matt Fantastic's company uh, picked it up. And now you can get your copy of Kama Sutra. But yeah, yeah. Matt Fantastic's actually a neighbor. Well, not neighbor, but he's like 30 minutes from me. But uh, he oh, really? Runs, yeah, he runs uh, Elm City Games. He's like, a, I'm in Hartford ish, and he's in New Haven. So it's uh, it's actually really funny how he picked that up. Cause I was like, I went to his booth and I was like, hey, Matt. And I was like, wait, you have Kama Sutra now? Like, okay, like, that's awesome. So, uh, <laughs> but uh, I yeah, ended up buying Matt a copy is actually, then. Matt's the designer of our next game. So shameless shilling here, just totally promoting uh, uh, that's not lemonade. And hopefully it'll be hitting Kickstarter later this year. But it's a, awesome. the dumbest press your luck game ever. But yeah, Matt, fantastic, great character. You guys should have him on the show. But you definitely have to have that explicit rating because he puts me to shame when it comes to swearing. And I'm from Cleveland. <laughs> and Cleveland's known as the city that swears the most. We're known for a lot of things, yeah. and swearing's one of them. You're you're goddamn right. So <laughs> okay. the um, see, so we went there, went there. But so two rooms in a boom. How long ago did you guys put that out? Because it's been out for a little while now. Yeah, I think it's been three years that it's been available, but we had no experience whatsoever. We are truly a Kickstarter story where it's just two guys and we did as much, re as much research as we could. We went around asking people at all the conventions, hey, what advice could you give us? And we got some great advice. But our game was late. It was a year late and we sold out because I remember Sean telling me, he says, all right, at our continual rate, we shouldn't run out of copies of Two Rooms and a Boom, but we want to err on the side of caution and make sure we have more copies for Christmas time. But when December hit, we sold out right away. We didn't think we'd be selling that many copies. So then we were out for almost an entire year. I think it was like nine months before it was available again. But now we're finally on top of it. We've finally learned our lessons, taken our lumps, and now we know how to keep it continually in stock. But yeah, it's it's still doing relatively well, which is obviously great because I love the fact that six to 30 people can get together and just play a quick game. It's a good time. It definitely. Yeah, it's um, it's arguably one of my favorite convention games. I run a little quote unquote con in my house and I usually have like 40 people over for my birthday weekend. And that is the highlight. Like every Friday night and Saturday night, we're that's that's what we're doing. We start out basic and then we just start jamming in the rolls. And uh, I can't wait to start to add in the Necrobumicon because I have it, but I haven't gotten it out yet. So it's. That's gonna hit the table in a couple of weeks here, but hopefully it's uh it's it's awesome. I love it. Uh, thanks. It's Necrobumicon, fair warning, it's two rooms in a boom on hard mode, but you can play it <laughs> with fewer than ten people because one of the things that we get is people say the sweet spot is fourteen or more players. Some people say eleven players, but definitely people say more than 10 players because at 10 players you can do more with your cards you can color share it's what we call it but right. with necrobumicon we allow color sharing no matter how few of players you have but you may not want to because there's a lot of characters that instantly win the game or instantly end the game so it is two rooms in a boom on hard mode where people are actually really nervous we wanted to evoke that hp lovecraft tension of fear and suspicion because you really have to trust someone before you show it. And in that way, it almost feels more like werewolf 
because in werewolf you don't have the benefit of card sharing anything you just have to trust right. that someone isn't a werewolf or is and in this game it's almost like that because you can say i'm pretty sure you're not an elder god that's just gonna win the game and devour my soul if i show you this and oh thank goodness <laughs> you're not but anyway right. so be prepared be prepared now, when you made that, did you make you made that with the shut up and sit down guys, right? No, we didn't. Shut up and sit down has nothing to do with two rooms and a boom, except that they loved it. And it was ranked oh, okay. number four best game of all time. Look at me just harping on my own game again. <laughs> like, nice, nice. Just <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> uh, I think you anyway. like it a little bit, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so they really liked it. Although I probably shouldn't say this. We asked them if they wanted to get in on the action because I know that they made moniker cards and right. our friends Alex Haig and Justin Vicker came up with monikers, which is just a twist on the classic game older than any of us celebrities. But it's the best version of that, in my opinion. And shut up and sit down thought so, too. And so they made their own cards. So I've been after them a little bit and... Hopefully this isn't me harassing them by bringing it up on a public forum like this, but it would be great yeah. to hear their ideas and what characters they would like to say, because I would totally listen to them. Well, I mean, I'm sure like everybody's watching the show right now, so they're they're going to have to hear it. I mean, I made them. It packs you. I actually uh, got them to sign a uh, I had a wooden pair at home and I <laughs> I brought it in and made them sign it both. It was pretty pretty nice. interesting little i'm like that's probably got to be one of the strangest things that anybody's ever signed right and here's a quick break from the interview here's dramatic rules theater gan presents dramatic rules theater the component that was hit must be removed this might cause some other components to become disconnected remove them as well if your ship is broken in two pieces, you decide which piece you will pilot to your destination and which piece will be lost. Lost components are placed in your discard pile on the right side of your shipboard. When you reach your destination, you will have to forfeit one cosmic credit for each lost component. Any playing pieces, crew, battery, tokens, goods on lost components are returned to the bank. You get to try to make it to Shucks this year in October. It'll be their second Shucks show in Canada. Uh, I know, but it's like, <laughs> I mean, it's like, oh, it's just in Canada. But then you look and it's like, no, it's on the other side of Canada. That's like borderline yeah, Alaska. Yeah, it's a, yeah. it's it's a little harsh for me. I trust me, I would love it because those that dry British sense of humor is right up my alley, and I just, uh, I wish. I wish, but I guess you guys like to go, right? You went this year. How was that? Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Because they dedicated an entire room to two rooms and a boom and any other social game I wanted a play test. So I was busy <laughs> so much. In fact, they were joking when they'd see me, they'd say, Hey, there's the hardest person working at shucks. There has to be more people working harder than me backstage or whatever. But seriously, I was hosting game after game after game, including games that, again, I was play testing things like Thingy and Fairy Tale Betrayal. These are these large player social games that we have yet to publish that right. I'm still tinkering with and trying to perfect. And it was really cool because it was a smaller show, probably because it was new in Vancouver and it was their first year. But we were able to play one game after the other and after the other. So I was able to make changes right there and then to the game and adapt it as people played. And that's something they really love doing. I found the players would just say, oh, change this, change this. And they got to see me say, okay. And then we'd play it the way they would want to change and therefore getting their name in the rule book as a play tester if we go to publish. So it was, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of work, but so good. So good. <laughs> I I can only I mean 
probably one of the drawbacks and probably one of the reasons why, you know, you guys have gotten two games out now and you're working on the third uh, is, mm -hmm. I mean, to play test these things has got to be, you know, hard because, I mean, two rooms does need 10 players to really kind of make it work over the three rounds. Right. So I can only imagine trying to find large groups that can play has got to be extraordinarily difficult. Unlike normal play yeah. testing for like, you know, smaller games, right? Yeah, it's definitely not a two player game. And we have two player games in our windmill that are coming up. But I'm a full time professor of psychology and Sean's busy doing side gigs and freelancing. So we try to put in the time when we can. So we, this right. really is projects of love. And to be fair, we have plenty of people that love two rooms and a boom six player. It all depends on the cards you use. And I will totally admit here to everybody that if you're playing two rooms in a boom six player and you're only using the vanilla rolls, bomber, president, red team, blue team, blah. But if you yeah. put in nothing but gray rolls and things, it really depends on your group and the roles you put in. But you're absolutely right. We have to go to conventions and play test these large player games. I do this event every October in... Uh, Hawking Hills, Ohio at Ravenwood Castle and it sells out right away and it's 50 players. It's the entire weekend, Halloween weekend. So it's Halloween themed. We have a costume contest, dance, a talent contest, nice. but it's also just an opportunity for me to play some of these games. And some of them, I don't think I'll even publish. Like some are done, like done, done. <laughs> and I save it for the castle event. Maybe eventually we will, but Again, we're just two dudes trying to go at publishing games. So, oh my God, yeah. Alan. But you're totally right. You actually, by the, just to mention though, you actually completely sold me on a, This House is Haunted on, I think it was like a Halloween episode a while ago. I am like oh, the yes. hugest fan of that game now. So it's like, it just sucks that you can't play it all the time, but it's just, I like, whenever anyone, anyone's just like, hey, I need a Halloween game, I'm like, just get This House is Haunted. Have a great time. Just be aware that uh, if someone's not good into role playing or uh, you don't have it might not space, be as good. yeah, then almost is I'll say it's garbage. I'll say it's off, garbage at that point. So is that the one where you turn off like the lights and you walk in different rooms yes. and it's almost yeah. like AR a little bit? Yeah. Oh, that sounds yeah, yeah. But Gary, let me ask you: Did you play with the house rules that we suggested on the podcast? Because we tweaked it a crap ton in order to make it work. Did you use any I, house rules? Or did you play straight? To be honest, I can't remember what your house rules were. I remember just like listening on the podcast, you and then I heard "son of a." <laughs> how dare you? Wait, so what? Were your anyway, house how rules are you then? doing, Chris? How are you doing? He's Chris? obviously not a fan. He's <laughs> obviously not a fan. Just saying. No, like, yeah, not, not a real not fan. Scary. No, uh, you know. what were some of the house rules? I'm trying to remember. Some of the house rules were um, we had to make sure that we, when we went to the rooms, we didn't go at the same time. That was one rule I definitely remember. So the idea of the whole game is you start in one room, which they call home room. And when I say home room, automatically, what do you think of? Uh, Class I think home of Mel Ringen and Mrs. O'Leary yeah, taking my name. <laughs> exactly right so uh already kind of theme breaking it's not doesn't remind me so we called it sanctuary so that's like a little tidbit but one person takes turns a turn being a leader and they assign different players different rooms they're supposed to go to because no one has cards but in each room is a deck of cards so you're supposed to say like hey chris you go to the bedroom and gary you're going to go ahead and go into the basement bathroom. But if everyone leaves at the same time, that kind of ruins tension because there are actually some cards that you draw that say, never go to the room that you're assigned. And it's an amazing, scary game because <laughs> when you do go into a room, you have the chance of drawing a card that says, you have to stay in this room and haunt this room. And it gives you sp specific objectives. Like the easiest one, and I don't think a plot spoiling here is just scream at someone and if they jump then the curse is broken and both of you can leave but if they don't jump and you fail to scare them they're haunted too and so now they're part of the ghosts that haunt this room so it's amazing because you're supposed to come back to sanctuary at the end but then you'll th be thinking where's gary 
oh crap, Gary's not back. Does anyone remember which room we sent Gary to? But if you all walk at the same time, you could just see Gary walking into a room. So we always have this 20 second delay between people going out. We, we also we, covered up our flashlights to make it darker. And that was another thing that we did. Yeah, we, I made a rule where it's um, uh, only cell phone lights, but you can't use the actual flashlight. You actually just use the LED part of it. Oh, the screen it. light. Yeah, and, um, smart. And then Smart. the or lighters, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> but we actually got kind of lucky with the whole room thing because uh, what ended up happening was was that uh, I would say the room, and then that person would just immediately get up and leave. And then it was like maybe like then like five ten seconds later, I would say the next oh, room, okay. and then they'd get up and leave. And the house was gotcha. kind of big enough, and a, like everything was kind of had enough space around it, so you could kind of mess around. Like for example. If let's say for example someone got that car that you said where they'd have to instantly haunt something, they could just go outside, and then you can actually get into the basement and upstairs through outside. Uh, so it like still okay. worked out, so they could still kind of sneak around. So we got kind of yeah. lucky, but that's a really good house rule, though. Yeah, uh, and there's a bunch of you, other things that you, we did, and we're changing it to the point where it's almost a different game at this point when we play it and it's an annual tradition every halloween we try to play this but we can't talk about the, the cards do because that plot spoils it the big surprise is what the card says when you draw it's like oh i'm supposed to act like a spider and crawl on someone's back i made that one up so i didn't plot spoil but that's kind of <laughs> the idea of this house is haunted and it's a cheap game crafter game i'm amazed it doesn't get more love uh, I'm going to have to look that up. That sounds pretty amazing. You need people that are willing to play and people that are willing to piss their pants because it's legit a scary game as long as your friends are able to scare you. So, yeah, it's good. It's good. Good callback, Gary. They nice work. Yeah, no problem. Anytime, they, anytime. They scare me all the time. Believe me. <laughs> so so you, you're a psychology professor. So, you know as in life, those who can't do teach. And that's cool. Um, but You're how much are you finding? <laughs> so how, how do you find the psychology playing into the games that you, you kind of designed? Because you can't tell me that there's no social engineering going on there at all. No, that's the big part of it all. Actually, when Sean and I got together and designed Two Rooms in a Boom, he had never played Werewolf before or any social deduction games, which just blew my mind really? because I've been playing Werewolf and Mafia since I was a teen, preteen, probably. Anyway, so he said, this is amazing. We should make a game together and it should be like Werewolf or The Resistance. And we said, OK, here's my big beef about Werewolf is getting eliminated early because then what are you going to do? Just sit around and watch everyone else play. And right. the big problem that we had with resistance was that emotional manipulation was a very viable strategy. We had too many games where we would play with someone and they would just get angry. Like, I'm not the spy. I'm not the spy. And people say, <laughs> okay, okay, you're not the spy. All right. And then at the end, they would say, I was the spy the entire time. You guys totally bought it. Like, yeah, but no one likes you anymore because you freaked out. Yeah. So we wanted a game that really felt like a cooperative game that brought people together. So even if you lost, you spent your entire time just really getting together as a group. And that's what really drove a lot of what we were trying to accomplish when we sat down to design Two Rooms in a Boom. And it's funny because I think uh, the other thing Werewolf suffers from is it kind of has um, the metagame carryover problem. Like if you play multiple rounds of it, that <laughs> yes. you can't really... Yes. You can't really change how you play too much, but where right. two rooms, the are disparate enough, but similar enough at the same time that you don't have that huge, you know, metagame. It's a cleanse palette every time. Up. Yeah. And you're yeah. on teams, so it doesn't matter. You're on teams on Werewolf too, but you don't know that. But in Two Rooms and Boom, you can verify by showing that you can show your card. You can do whatever you want with your card. Whereas in Werewolf, right. I could totally say, like, Gary! Gary was a werewolf last time. We should eliminate him just because I don't want him to win twice in a row. He really dicked us over last time. I'm not going to let him do it again. And so Gary, just because yeah. he did well, is now gone. And it's funny because, I, you yeah, know, you cool. mentioned it. And now that 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 clicks, it, Gary's always the, the traitor, just for the record. Anybody who ever plays with them. The, um, 
but the color share, it's like when you find that person who was the bomber last time, everybody wants to color share with them immediately just to kind of get past that and kind of say, oh, okay, they're cool or, oh, they're bad. Let's just move on and get on with it. Right. So, right. Uh, definitely. So huh. is that going to play into future games you want to design or, or how do you, what do you see happening yeah. here? Yeah. So I was on a shut up and sh sit down. <laughs> Shut up and shit down. Uh, shut up. A shut up and sit no down one's panel. Ever done that before, right? Yeah, I'm sure. Shut up and sit down <laughs> panel. That's on YouTube as well. Speaking of traders, where I talked with Matt Lees and we talked about the psychology of why we play. And then uh, I was also invited by Plaid Hat Games, and we did a talk about stuff fables and the psychology of playing, the benefits of playing tabletop games. And I would be a fool if I didn't apply that to our own games in the future. We've had a lot of submissions from designers and we've rejected some of them because we said, hey, listen, we think you have a game here and you should totally go for it. And we've actually recommended other publishers to these games, but okay. as preachy as it sounds, which is weird because one of our games is World Championship Russian Roulette, we didn't want people feeling sore or hurt. We wanted people to feel closer together because they played the game, not the opposite. So it's all about bringing people together. In fact, that's why we loved Matt's Fantastic. That's not Lemonade. It's so quick and simple and it's easy access. It's the simplest press your luck game you can ever imagine. It's even simpler than Blackjack by far. And it's so quick that everyone's laughing and they're watching and it's really intense. And so we feel that at the end, there's that comp competition without the sacrifice of closeness and friendship. And I know that I'm speaking to a specific crowd because there are people out there that just love seeing other people lose. There's strong Euro right. games that are just very cutthroat. There are take that games by definition. The whole mechanic is bam, take that. <laughs> and we're not necessarily interested in that. Uh, but also if you're talking about psychology, as far as principles of, you know, group think or, thinking of contributing to stereotypes, but also psychology behind why we play and increasing fun. For instance, there is the loss aversion rule of psychology. Have you guys heard of this loss aversion? Sound familiar, Gary? Nope. Familiar, but oops, probably no could do it with the refresh. <laughs> okay, worry, do we need to do a refresh, with Gary? No camera. <laughs> Did it, yeah, right. Who do we lose? Did we lose me? Did we, what's going, Gary, do your yeah. job. What's going on, Gary? <laughs> All right, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll be right back. You guys can continue. All right. But I haven't heard of it, though. Okay. I just wanted to make sure we're technically savvy because I heard something happen. Is everything cool? We're good to go. Chris, yeah. we're good? We're good to go. Okay. Yep. Okay, cool. Yep. So loss aversion. We just I'm lost rambling. Gary. It, it helps things. <laughs> oh, well, good riddance. Spy Gary. So not really. Right. I love the guy. Um, so loss aversion is the classic example is in Hearthstone. Have you heard of Hearthstone Blizzard? It's like their mm -hmm. version of magic. And right. uh, actually not even in Hearthstone. A better example is World of Warcraft. In World of Warcraft, they have resting experience where if you've rested for a while and you come back on, you get double experience for a while. But the first time they released that, what happened was if you played for too long, it would start penalizing you and have your experience points. And people complained a up a storm like, what? If I'm playing for over an hour, you start having my experience? That's ridiculous. So they just said, okay, we'll give you a bonus for the first hour that you play. And everyone thought that's so much better. But realistically, it's the same damn thing. <laughs> it's just totally phrased differently. So that's the whole loss of version. Right. No one wants to feel like they're losing. So a big rule in game design is don't have any cards or actions that undo someone else's action because then their turn was useless. Like, well, this game, that blows. Like, I'm not happy now because I just wasted my time investment of this strategy of playing these cards. So having reverse. And that's why Magic the Gathering, people hate the blue deck which is the cancellation deck. Like I cast a spell on you, but I have the blue deck. Mm, silence. And people are like, damn it. <laughs> anyway, so that's definitely goes into game design. That card is really useful during this entire interview. <laughs> that card has come up like 20 <laughs> times. 
<laughs> oh, just this? I thought let you me meant guess. silence. I it's, thought you were saying I was talking too much. Let me guess. It's the <laughs> two of spades, right? Right. Oh, Maybe. my goodness. Chris, you're not going to believe this. But believe it or not, you said two of spades. And that card indeed is the <laughs> two of spades. 50 How did you do oh. that, sir? Oh, my wow. goodness. There, there's... There's no this magic of television involved in that. That was just just happened. Just happened. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Live in the moment. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, good so, work, sir. You know, it, it pays to run the show. What can I say? The um the one thing, like we we kind of ask a ask a couple warm up questions. Um, and your family raised exotic pets. What? Like, what's you did your homework, about? sir? That's just this is actually that's, surprising. That's exotic. That's <laughs> that is exotic, exotic. And weird. This is crazy like, because I'd, I'd put up like the Jack Hanna picture right now if I could, but you know we're not. The, we the don't have the budget is, quite yet for that. No joke. I didn't have this conversation with Chris ahead of time. He's just bringing this up out of the blue. Uh, so yeah, my family. The story is that my father was a surgeon. He's retired now. And he saved the life of a man who had an exotic animal refuge, not refugee, what is it called? Rescue shelter. So an exotic refuge? animal rescue okay. shelter. Yeah, refugee camp is what I was thinking, but that's ridiculous. <laughs> anyway. Sounds like a bad Fuji song, guys. <laughs> have you ever gone to kiss a dog on its head or something and the dog lifts its head up and smashes you in the face and it just hurts like a son of a bitch? Well, if it's a bear that does that, it actually cracks your skull. So my father operated on this guy and actually fused his skull back together and you couldn't even tell. And so this guy was so grateful. He said, you should come by and check out these animals, these lions and these tigers and these bears and these foxes and all sorts of crazy things. And the guy's... Uh, his rescue shelter was too small. He was running out of room. And so my father said, well, we'll help you. So my father got certified federally to be able to take care of exotic animals. And so pretty soon we transformed our basement into a leopard cage for the wintertime. And then outside, he had this three-story atrium cage where we had our leopard, Lena. And I mean, that was a good 10 years but also if he ran out of room and there were babies, we would help raise these other animals like lion one time, some bears and definitely some tigers. So yeah. So if you look through my Facebook and you creep me on Facebook and you look through my pictures, you'll see a lot of pictures of me like swimming with bears. And in fact, one of the bears was my brother's ring bearer, get it? At his <laughs> wedding. It's kind of awesome actually. Yeah, it's so cool. And so I have plenty of stories of like wrestling the bears and uh, having to be live bait to try because one time the leopard got out of her cage and it's really instinctual for wild cats to pounce on things that aren't looking at them. That's why it's safe if you're going through a wild cat filled jungle to wear a mask on the back of your head so they don't pounce. It's something they can't resist. It's really bizarre. For instance, if you're at an exhibit and the cat isn't coming up to you, all you have to do is turn your back and the cat will come right to you. And so Lena got out of her cage one time and we had her in a leash basically to make sure that she was okay. But the problem with a leopard is that their heads are just as small as their necks are thick. So my dad was saying, hey, Lena, it's time to go back in your cage. And she just goes, no, whoop, and pushes the collar right <laughs> off with a leash. Like, uh oh, how are we going to get her back in? So I had to be human bait. And I and this is upstairs in her house. And I turned my back and my father said, go. And so I just had to run as quick as I could. <laughs> and I'm lucky that I could take turns quicker than the cat. That's the only way I made it. But then I came in and I grabbed the cage door and was behind it. So she ran past and then closed. And it was one of the more terrifying times of my life. But at the same time, so cool and fun. 
I, I feel like you need hardwood floors because every time like I want to totally be a dick with my cat, I throw things on the hardwood floor so that they kind of like go and then they wipe out and they do like four turns. And it's yeah, it, I can only imagine what that thing must be like. How big were how big did she get? She weighed, I think when we weighed her, she got up to 90 pounds. So she was heavy. And here's the thing about leopards, the strongest cats per pound Obviously, the lions are the strongest of the cats, but they're right. huge. So per pound efficiency, a leopard is able to climb up a tree with an animal in its mouth that weighs its own body weight. So 80 pounds, it could carry up there. Am I, is my math right? Maybe I'm forgetting this because I thought if I weighed 150, she would have been able to carry me up. So, oh, it's twice their body weight. That's right. They're able to carry twice their body weight up a tree in their mouth. And that's just terrifying to think, oh, this cat could carry me in her mouth up that damn tree. It's just insane. So anyways, yeah, leopards are really strong. The more you know. And I can't even do a pull up, but <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's crazy. Wow. I mean, so where did they come from? I mean, now, now I'm, I'm so sorry if we're going to go down pet lane here. No problem. This is totally interesting. If a magician dies and the magician has a lion act and they have a pet lion, where does that lion go? The animal rescue shelter, the exotic animal rescue shelter. And that's why. So again, I don't want to sit here and say, oh, I'm endorsing. You should totally have pet lions and pet leopards and pet bears. Right. But other people right. totally do. And when they lose their rights or they get arrested and go to prison or something, those animals have to go somewhere. The ultimate place would be a zoo, but zoos are like colleges. Apparently you have to apply to try to get into them, to try to get your animals into them, etc. And luckily, luckily that's eventually where Lena went. She went into a zoo enclosure and um, hopefully she's doing fantastic nowadays. Although she's at that age, she's an old girl now. Yeah. So how long, how long is the life expectancy on some of these? Like, cause I mean, that's not a short term, like 15 year commitment, like for your family pet. No, the reason that my father eventually had to get rid of her is because my brother selfishly started having babies. I'm looking this up. Ugh. I'm cheating. I'm totally going on my computer and going leopard life expectancy because here's the thing. We weren't told 12 to 17 years is what it says, uh, 12 okay. to 17 years. So we, uh, we didn't really want to know. And it's, it's really heartbreaking because my father was really close to Lena. She hated other women too. She would purr and totally rub up against the cage when it was my dad and when it was me to a lesser extent. But if any woman came around, she was, it seemed jealous and she would How! and had that awesome type of howl and would go out. <laughs> I have plenty of stories of people like one time she got her claw into my thumb and their claws are her claws are over an inch long and they're like fish hooks. They're very hooked. And it went into my right. thumb and out of it. So I actually had to grab her claw, her whole paw, and just undo reverse my it. thumb wow. from her claw. Yeah. And apparently the way leopards kill their prey most of the time is they scratch disgusting stuff like shit and rotting flesh and that way when they attack someone they just scratch them and then wait and stalk them and let the infection kill their prey so they don't risk as much injury that way but once their prey is dead they can just carry it up the tree in their mouth it's ridiculous so yeah that's why i know a whole bunch about leopards is because we had one for almost a decade that's that's kind of incredible. I had no idea that, you know, things like that happen. But I guess it totally makes sense because, you know, though they need homes too. And you're right. It I guess the uh the process for the uh the zoos has got to be difficult too from your side cuz it's like you want to make sure that they go to a good home, so you don't want to like send them to yeah. the cruddy zoo that we have like down the street that's not quite as prestigious or has large enclosures right. or is, you know, more temperature controlled than some of the other places. So, you know, little... let's turn the tables, Chris, which zoo do you think let's is basically that. the Harvard? What is the best zoo in America? What's the Ivy league? Uh, I, 
I, I would have to say that it, it's definitely San Diego. And yeah, I would put yeah, a second one probably on like a Disney property, right? Like probably like an animal. Kingdom oh, I don't know. Or I never even those thought lines. of that. Yeah. I was Which, just I mean, thinking they of do San have like Diego. the open exhibits. Yeah, it's it's oh, definitely yeah. the Princeton Harvard of that. But it's nice. where I'd want to go, right? I would never have yeah. guessed yeah. any of that. <laughs> I would have just if I was asked that question, I'd just been like, uh Yeah. I, I I know my local. And zoo. that's why you're the sidekick. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> sidekick. All right, I'm yeah, out of here. The, I, <laughs> go back to your cave, Gary. Uh yeah, the <laughs> I lived in San Diego for a year, and if you live in San Diego, you have to have a pass to the San Diego Zoo. It's just a place, an amazing place to go to and chill out and see all these wonderful animals. So that was an amazing year because I basically lived at the San Diego Zoo while I was in San Diego. So, yeah. If you go to San Diego, it's a must. You have to go to the San Diego Zoo. Trust me. I can't imagine ever wanting to leave San Diego because that is like got to be like the perfect place for weather and everything right it's an oasis it is an oasis yeah there's a lot of memories that i have in san diego but there's reasons to go for sure i mean le- reasons to leave uh but yeah like their dog beaches are amazing so there is coronado beach is amazing so i'm a huge dog lover big dog person which is an interesting mix when it comes to the leopard. <laughs> I've got dog and <laughs> wild exotic animal mixture stories too, but the dogs in San Diego, you just take them to the beach and they run free and it's just so easy and chill and amazing. But I really like as crazy as it sounds, Cleveland is where my heart is. And I know that sounds crazy to people because Cleveland's made fun of a lot for being the worst city in America, but it is where my family is. It's where I grew up and I wanted to go back. I wanted to teach there. I wanted to be able to have my family there. So just, that's why I love San Diego. Just blame the Drew Carey show on people thinking that. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, or the crime rate or the uh, poverty yeah, or, uh, or the education. Yeah. Right. So, I think those things do that. come I mean, for Drew I Carey. Can't, <laughs> yeah. I can't really say anything coming from around Philadelphia. So, I mean, we're, we're, we're not that much better. We just have a port that we get to ship everything out of occasionally when it works. But I think our biggest competitor is Detroit. No offense if you're from Detroit, Ooh. but I think we've got you beat Detroit. So we're both the mistakes on the lakes, as we like to say. <laughs> nice. Awesome. Well, thanks a lot, Alan. This has been, this has been a lot of fun. But uh, I think it's time to play a game. And uh, you actually chose the game and a little turn of events. And we're going to be playing Monikers with a uh, variant that you developed, I believe, right? That is correct, Chris. It is in the back of the rule book. Uh, I don't know how this is going to go. (laughs) It's your fault. (laughs) Right. Let's, Let's not hold this to the criteria because we're doing all this webcam and I've never played it not in person before so this could be some beautiful exercise or it could be a beautiful exercise in catastrophe so let's find out yeah yeah so stay tuned right after this word from our sponsor hey everyone i hope you're enjoying the show Real quick, I just wanted to take a moment to let you know a few things about us. Number one is we have a Pod Pledge page. Now on there, you can donate any amount, uh, monthly, weekly, daily, whatever, and any of that goes directly to support the show, build the sets, better equipment, and all those things. I'm not trying to get rich. I'm not trying to quit my day job. It just anything helps. Number two is please check out our social media. If you're not following us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, please do so. We definitely interact with our people a lot on there uh, because we want you guys to be part of this show. Also, be sure to subscribe to YouTube. You know that little red button down there? Make sure you're clicking that and also do the bell icon so that you can get notified whenever we post a video. Once, twice, maybe three times a week. Lastly, please be sure to tell your friends. Whether you retweet something, whether you go out and you tell them about the channel, show them a show, Anything you can do to get the word out, we would greatly appreciate it. So that's it. I'm now going to return you to your regularly scheduled program. Operators are standing by. 
It's game time! All right, and it's time for Game with Guests. Tonight I'm joined by Alan Girding, and we are playing Monikers at his request. And since that's the case, I'm going to make Alan explain the co-op version that he designed. Oh, hey, yeah. Co-op version is really simple variant. Instead of having teams and splitting it up, we are on the same team. It's fully cooperative. The opponent is the clock. So what we're going to do is we're going to set a timer, and I'm going to give you one. You're going to give me one. We're going to go back and forth until we go through the deck three times. Now, for easy mode, we are aiming for about two minutes and 30 seconds per player. So for two of us, that's just going to be a five minutes. Anything after five minutes, shameful. If we're really good, it's just two minutes per player. So if we can make it at the four minute mark, if we get lower than four minutes, Chris, oh my goodness, just high five. We're going to blow five. it wide open. Boom. It's not awkward. <laughs> not awkward at all. I'm excited. <laughs> I love me some monikers. This is by far the most requested game. And I love the cooperative version because it brings us closer together. There's none of those hurt feelings like, you're not supposed to make any noises. It's supposed to be one word, but we're all on the same team. That way it's just like, you're just supposed to say one word in round two. So, All right. So behind the scenes, we have Gary feeding us words, um, both on our screens. And uh, Alan's going to kick it off. Uh, and as soon as Gary's ready to go. All right. All right. So three, two, one, go. This is the woman who had sexual rea relations with Bill Clinton. Monica Cigar. Lewinsky. Yes, go, sir. All right. Um, there are six degrees of this person. Kevin it's Bacon. A game you play a lot. Kevin Bacon. Excellent. Uh, this is the person that you should never make a picture of because the. Muslim religion worships him and uh, you'll get murdered. Muhammad. If they do. But the prophet uh, Muhammad. Yes, exactly. Very good. Go, sir. Okay. This is a Maru that Captain Kirk beat by cheating. Oh, no. Oh, no. Don't shame me. So, Captain Kirk. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> is it Tribbles? It's not Tribbles. Right. Uh, oh, this no, is that. Oh, no. It's. Yeah, it's the. Um, it's, uh, I believe, a Japanese word. Um, Are you talking about uh, Kobayashi? Yes. Kobayashi. He's the guy that ate all the hot dogs, man. All right. Uh, let's see. Oh, this is the lead singer of Nirvana. Totally killed himself. Probably because of uh, his girlfriend. Kurt wife, Cobain. Yes, exactly. <laughs> this is so funny. All right. I love this. He, he is the enemy of He-Man. Skeletor! Hey, <laughs> speaking of dead people, this lady died, and a lot of people were sad because she was from England, and the paparazzi, paparazzo, were chasing her. Oh, oh Princess Diana. Yeah, Princess dead. Yeah, you got it. Keep going. It is Princess Di. All right. If um, I am fair-skinned and I have lots of Hail. things all over. Um, You're an albino. No, they're the You're little. pimply face. Zits? No. Freckles, freckles, nope, freckles. Nope. But it's a that and freckle face, freckle face. Yes, you're yes, a freckle face. Yes. Okay. There you go. Cool. All right. <laughs> Are we done? Was that first round? Are we now one word? Uh, no, nope. we're just I still need one, one more. Okay. Uh, this is one of the villains from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cartoons. He's also Freud's most famous patient. It's the bigger version of a mouse. Oh. I vol? What's, think, no. Think of um, a mouse, but bigger. Right? Rat? Um, yes. Opposite of queen. Queen? King rat? Flop them around. Rat king. The rat yes, king. Yes. There we go. Good. Okay. Good. Good. All right. Um, I have no idea what this is, but um, if Gary let his hair grow out and Afro. he walked around with... Right, and he walked around with a sword and Afro he wore Ninja. all Afro black. Afro Samurai. Yes, yes, perfect. Okay, cool. All right, this is so fun. All right, now it's all right. one word. All right, sweet. One word. Oh wait, wait so you gotta one. go through all three rounds 
in- Gary, get with it. What are you doing, <laughs> Gary? Yes, this is how the game plays. We're doing round two. One word. Give me my damn word, Gary. <laughs> Like, this is my favorite game. <laughs> All right, give me... we become friends with one another. There's no one ever gets angry unless you're playing with Gary and his incompetence. Come on, Gary, get it together. All right, all right, me... all right. Two seconds to reset Shuffle the game. Shuffle faster. Let it. Let the viewers know we should add on time to this time because of Gary. well the sad thing is he knows how to edit so he's just gonna like chop this out that's the worst part you know he's not gonna get all that unedited unedited even this part of me saying Uh, unedited is gonna be he'd have to be an editing master he's a really lazy editor (laughs) okay did you send me my word gary (laughs) yep the way we're doing this is one word only so he's sending us our word uh Clinton. Monica Lewinsky. Yes. Degrees. Kevin Bacon. Good word, sir. You're good at this yes. game. Hair. Rat King. No. Should we pass? Yeah. Okay. Give me another one, Gary. And put that one back into circulation. Kirk. Kobayashi. Yes. Go. He Man. Skeletor. Oh, that was easy. Man, that's like getting cat in the skelling, spelling bee. Skelling bee, because it's Skeletor. Skelling, skelling bee. bee. Where's my damn yeah. word, Gary? Gary, where's my damn word? <laughs> Muslim. Moha- the Prophet Muhammad. Yes, very good. Um. Oh, sorry. Um, One word. Melatonin. <laughs> oh no, melatonin. Not Kurt Cobain. It's not the Rat King. It's not the Prophet Muhammad. It's not Afro Ninja. Um, dang it. Serotonin. Sad, sleepy, no, tears. Melatonin. Melatonin. Sleepy, 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 sleepy. Melatonin, sleepy. Uh, man, why don't I remember the word about sleepy? Sandman. Uh, we're gonna have to pass. Give him the different word. I'm so uh, sorry. I'm so sorry. All right. Nirvana. Kurt Cobain. Okay. All right. Paparazzi. Princess Die. Yes. Uh oh. We're gonna be stuck in the same words. I don't remember what. The Irish. Name was. Irish. Damn it. Why don't I remember Irish? Jig. Uh, it's not Kevin. Man, I don't remember. I'm so sorry. I'm letting you down, uh, Chris. I'm almost as bad as, uh, as Gary over there. Um, uh, Pass. I'm so sorry. Why can't it? Flanagan's way. Sorry. Wait, sorry. Next one. Um, Gary. Afro Ninja. Okay. <laughs> That's gonna stick. Okay. Uh, mm, uh, um, uh, ginger. Freckle face. Yes, yes. Um, turtles. Oh, uh, the rat king. Awesome. All right, good job. Yep, that was all. Yep, that was the round. All right. Round three, round three. Shuffle it up, Gary. All right. So visual only. Visual only. In my house, we say no sounds. Because some people have to go like... (laughs) But at true moniker fashion... If there was a button I could push that would say maybe... 
Ah, <laughs> no. the mute. Okay. Yeah. All, right. All right, let me uh, delete these, and then what was the what was the melatonin? Was that freckle face? Yeah. Because we thinking melanin. Your... That's melanin, yes. sir. Yes. Melatonin's <laughs> okay. what puts you to sleep. Yes. All right. So <laughs> that's why cool, I'm the cool. host, not the researcher either. <laughs> No, they're very close. I give you no shame there. Uh, yeah. Are we I, ready, I Gary? I eat freckles to go to sleep. Uh, right. <laughs> yes. So, ready, set. Yes. Go. My turn? It's my turn, Gary? Yeah, yep. you first. Yeah, first. Freckle face. Yes. Afro Samurai. Afro Ninja. Afro Ninja, Afro Ninja. Damn the lag on this video, because I'm saying it. It is Afro Ninja. It has to, it's not Afro Ninja? Princess Die? Splinter or Rat King? Rat King. The Rat King? The Rat King. It's not the Rat King? Oh, dang it. And it's not Princess Die? Kobayashi? Uh, oh, Skeletor! Skeletor! Skeletor. Yes, okay. yes. Got it, Skeletor. All right. Damn it. We have a lot it. of things with swords. Okay, here we go. Princess die. Yes, yes. That's horrible. That's absolutely horrible. <laughs> Afro ninja. Afro ninja. Okay. Like a boss. Oh, this is going to be tough. Rat King. Rat King. Oh, Kurt Cobain. Kurt Cobain. No, not Kurt Cobain. Um, not the Rat King, not Kurt Cobain. Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> it's awesome. I wish I knew what it was. And they die. Uh, uh. <laughs> Bake Kevin Bacon. Yes, God damn yes, it. it's Kevin Bacon. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Um, Kurt Cobain, Kurt Cobain, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> very good, yeah, yeah, that was a good one. All right, um, all right. Oh, that's the Rat King, that's totally yes, the Rat that's King, that's the Rat King, yes, Kobayashi. Oh, the Prophet Muhammad, of course. The Prophet Muhammad. Yeah. Excellent. Good Excellent. luck. They're yes. coming after you now. You just depicted it as praise be unto him. I, yes, praise be unto yeah. him. I was, okay. I was pointing and praying. A that's a, oh, sorry. Oh my God, I have no idea. Quite swarmy. Um, I'll. Everybody at home, uh, it's uh, uh, well. You can always pass. Uh, uh I have to pass. I can't. I, All right, I can't pass. remember what the heck it was. What card does Chris now have? Oh, I go again. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah you go my again. My bad. Okay. Yo, this one's easy. <laughs> Monica Lewinsky. Yes, Monica Lewinsky. <laughs> All right. Is it Kobayashi? It might be. It's Kobayashi. Yeah, I, yes. That's what I was trying to get you to totally. get. That's why we had to pass. Okay, cool. Is that all of them? But I totally forgot them? about the hot dog. That was things. all of them. You guys okay. should feel ashamed oh. of yourselves. Oh, my goodness. Even, we're way Well, we kind of do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I kind of feel more ashamed of you, Gary. Anyway. No, it was good. That was so much fun, man. I love Monica. That was this is awesome. So yeah, so good. That so was good. good. And look, we feel so close with one another now. That's the whole point of games. Absolutely. Bringing together, people together. So, man, nice work. We'll try this one more awkward time. See if I can. Huh, huh, uh, uh. There we go. High five me. Boom! Yeah, it's hard, especially with lag and whatnot. Nice. But very good, sir. Yeah. Very good. But it cool. kind of works. 
Uh, that was amazing, Alan. So where can people find you on the internet? You can find me anywhere on social media. I'm Alan Gerding, G-E-R-Ding. I guess my name's spelled the English way, A-L. I don't even know why I'm talking because Gary's put up the information on the screen. Follow the screen or better yet, check you out hope. our podcast. You hope. Yeah, I hope. I hope. Check out the podcast. I don't know. Gary's record isn't really good right now. Gary. But uh, yeah, just check out TuesdayNightGames.com. So it's, I can't emphasize enough, Chris. This has been so much fun. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, it was great. I appreciate you uh, coming on the show and hanging out. And, you know, you really brought it tonight. Thanks a lot. Um, <laughs> thanks, everybody at home for watching. Be sure to check Alan out and uh, look for that Kickstarter coming later on this year. I think that's going to be a lot of fun. So, yeah, that's it from us. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out this week's media creator shout out, Pair of Dice Paradise, featuring Chaz Marler. Check him out on YouTube and wherever fine podcasts are sold. It's the Top 5 Countdown. I posed a specific question early in the week and used the hashtag GANTOP5. You too can respond and submit your very funny answer. Because generally speaking, y'all are funnier than I am. So this week I asked, where do you hide games from your significant other? Number five, I have hid them from myself in other game boxes, says Spam Sicola on Twitter. In our house, I would, wait, why am I giving you ideas again? That one came from my wife. Number three, the only place they would be safe in the future. J. Cole, zero, zero. All right, number two. In the secret room, I also did not tell them about. Jared Hunnefeld. Need to go to his house sometime. And the number one answer is, I can't hide anything from her. She sees everything, says J. Peak. And then his wife chimed in and said, damn right I do. So be sure to check back next week and see what crazy question I'm going to ask of you. Well, that's a wrap. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed our efforts at comedy and fun, please support us on Pod Pledge. Be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And of course, don't forget to engage with us on Board Game Geek Guild 3134. You can also check us out on our website, gameallnightshow.com. This show has been made possible through supporters like these. Angry Octopus. And Anything then the else? website would be yeah the website would be tuesdaynightgames.com spelled with a k uh, <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah